Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andreas Hazanak. I am in the Ubuntu server team in Canonical. And I'm going to show you today, give you a quick demo on how to use hardware keys or security keys with OpenSSH. The type of keys we are going to use, they, are, they have been made popular by YubiKey. So you will probably know them as YubiKeys. This is one of them. This is a USB-C one. This is FIDO2 capable. Here is an older YubiKey that is, this is the YubiKey 4. This is only FIDO or U2F capable. And this is a generic one I bought. This is a T110 module from TrustKey. And this is actually the one I'm going to use for this demo because those other two are my real day-to-day -day keys. And this one I can then reset and do whatever with it. So I'm going to plug it in into this external connector here. And I will show you every time I need to touch it or when I'm removing it and so on. Um, so let's begin. So I'm sharing a screen here on the top. This is my computer and down here is a container running on this computer. It's running on Jammy in this container. On the top I have Lunar, but this is essentially the same. This is supported since Ubuntu onto Jam, maybe Focal. I don't know it. Uh, so first, let me show you that a plain SSH will not work against this container because the authorized keys file is empty. So jammy server lexd refused. There's nothing there. So let's generate a key. To do that, I'm going to insert the, the hardware key into this dongle and it will start blinking. So that means it's ready. But it stopped blinking, so it, there is nothing going on right now. So I have to generate a key and to do that, key gen, I have to specify a very specific key type. And there are two that are supported. Uh, they are ECDSA and it, the SK suffix is important. That means security key. The other one is ED25519. This one, not all keys support. This one in particular does not support this hardware here. Uh, YubiKey 5 does support this algorithm. So let's do the one. So what, what happens when it's not supported? You get an error like this. And um, let's grab the other one. So now it's asking that I touch the authenticator and it starts blinking. So I need to touch it. Okay, SSH is now happy. It asks me for the name of the file. Let me give it the name of the key, just so it's easier for me. I can encrypt it with a passphrase. I will choose not to here. And this generated two files, the usual key pair that we are used to with OpenSSH, the private one and the public one. Now I copy the public one over to the server. Here I'm just going to paste it down here. It's saved and let me get the logs. So now when I do an SSH to that machine, I specify this key. Confirm user presence. And the hardware is touching. It, sorry, it's blinking. So I touch it. And the login is authorized. And down there, you can see that it was this key that was authorized. It was the security key that was authorized. And that's fine. I can remove this now. Sorry, log out. And um, you'll notice that no passphrase or anything was required of me to log in into this server. It's just the hardware and this key file. I need both. If I lose this key file, it's not stored on the hardware. You, you, you cannot log in anymore using this key. Likewise, if I don't have this key connected, so let's try again. Repeat this, but I'm going to remove the key. And if I now hit enter, it fails immediately. There is no hardware backing up this file, the private key part. So what if we actually want a bit more protection here? Um, you can set a passphrase on this private key as usual, then you will get prompted for the passphrase. Uh, but the other thing you can, and this only some, only the FIDO2 hardware keys support, it's setting a pin on the hardware. So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to, to do to do that. You need to install another package. You can also do this with a browser, but uh, you can do it with a package called Fido2. 
tools. Once you have that, you will get an utility FIDO2 token, which has a whole bunch of useful options. I'm going to right now insert, well, let's list the keys and there's nothing. So I'm going to insert the key. Now it's inserted. And when I list the command, you will see it was identified. Uh, we are going to need this device name here. This is how we specify which hardware key we are talking to. And we are going to set a pin now on this key. Sorry, on this hardware token. And to do that, FIDO2 token dash S and the name of the device. Choose a pin. I'm going to use, I'm going to tell you, you can probably guess, and it's set. So now I can actually generate a key that requires a pin. And to do that, we will generate the key pair just like before. Type ECDSA-SK, but with a new option, verify require it. Now I have to use the pin that I just uh, created. Touch, it's blinking. So touch it. Uh, the file, I'm going to use this one with the pin suffix so I know the difference and no passphrase. Now I have these two. Um, so let's test it. Grab the public part, copy, save it. On. I'm going to leave the other one there because I want to show you something. So this is the new one, the pin required one. Save. Let's do the journal again. Scroll up. SSH that's I pin. Jamie server LXD. Enter pin. Touch. So now two things were required. Well, three the, f the key file, the hardware, the pin, and I had to touch it to confirm user presence. How can you make this a bit more interesting now? So there is something we can do in SSH, which is configure, and I'm going to put this down here, that I want all the hardware keys to actually require a pin on this server. So to do that, I'm going to use a configuration option called, uh, let me just see my notes here. Uh, verify required. So it's pub key, sorry, pub key of options. Verify required. Save. Reload or restart. Let's see the journal again. And now let's try the other key. The one that I created at the beginning, which didn't require a pin. It's blinking, so I touch it. And, oops, denied. And down here we see that the server rejected this because user verification requirement not met. So this means now we are requiring hardware keys that, well, when hardware keys are used, that they need to have this user verification. That is done via the pin. So if I try the other one, which I used before, Enter the pin, touch. Now I'm, I'm fine. Now it's fine to get in. Um, if you need to reset this pin or change it, you have to use this FIDO2 token utility. And just going to show you a quick trick here. If you need to reset it, well, first of all, of course, all the keys generated with it will be gone. But you can reset it via the following command, FIDO2. Oops, I have to log out. FIDO2 token dash L, so you need that name of the device again. Preset dev hydro7. Now, there's a sequence of events here that you have to do. First, you have to remove it. And then you have to insert it. And within a few seconds, issue the reset command. If you take too long, you will have to start over. So insert it. It stops blinking, hit the reset, touch, you have to touch, confirm, and then it's reset. If you don't follow the sequence, if you get an error, then the timing was incorrect.
but now this is reset. Now it doesn't have any pin. And if I try to log in again, like this, didn't work. Any pin I type here, I mean, it, there is no pin, it, it doesn't work. And the other one, it didn't even ask me to touch because it, the key that I have, the file doesn't match the device anymore. Okay. Now there is one last thing I wanted to show and that is a resident key. So I mentioned that if you lose these files, in particular the private ones, uh, you're toast. You cannot, you have to regenerate the key, you have to create a whole authentication mechanism again. So there is a way to avoid this and that means you store everything in the hardware. So if you want to log into another machine or from another machine, instead of having to bring with you the hardware and this key file, you can just bring the hardware and extract the key on that other machine. So to do this, you also need a pin on the device. So let me set the pin again because I just reset this, right? Setting a pin. And now we're going to generate a key, which is called a resident key. And the command line is very similar. In fact, I'm going to take advantage of it here. I'm going to leave verify required, that's good. But also say, hey, I want a resident key. So you do this, enter the pin, touch, it's blinking, and the name. So I'm going to call it resident. And no passphrase. Do the same thing again, resident, pub. Let's put that down there. At the end here, I'm going to actually remove the other ones because they were generated before I reset the key, so they're useless. Save. Up here, let me also remove these ones that are useless now. Just keep the new one, resident. So this should keep working. Pin and touch. And I'm in, okay, that's fine. Now let's say I lost this. Okay, what do I do now? Well, the command to recover a resident key is dash K, pin, touch, no passphrase, and it saves the keys. Um, you will notice that the size, and which also means the contents, are not exactly the same, but that's just an artifact of the extraction. This will still work. The private part, I'm not copying the public part over again. Pin, touch, and I'm in. So the resident key, I mean, I extracted the key from the hardware, but to log in, I actually still need to specify the file. So you still need both things. And I think that's it. Uh, one more thing, now that we have a resident key, I can actually list it from the token. So there it is, and it has this application name, SSH. So you can have multiple keys. How many? Well, not infinite because they are residents or they are taking up space. So to list the slots in this particular key. So I'm using one and there are 149 left. Uh, the YubiKey 5 I have, it has 25 such slots. So you can store up to 25 resident keys. And that's it. Thank you for watching.